Hello, my name is Wade Nomura, and this is Rotary Serving Our Community. Today we're going to take a look at a tour, a special tour. It's called Connecting for Good. And with us we have the two chairs. We have Danielle and we have uh, Ryan. Welcome both of you. Thank you. Um, so we're going to start with you, Danielle. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I actually originated <laughs> from Reno, Nevada. Okay. I currently live outside of the San Francisco area, and I am in nursing. I actually work as an assistant manager at UCSF Medical Center. Um, I help manage an adult ICU. Great. So. Wow. Uh, congratulations and thanks for thanks. being here. <laughs> Ryan, how about you? Uh, I'm a Rotarian and have been so for 11 years. I'm from Georgia, Columbus, Georgia, and I'm out helping with the Connecting for Good Tour. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are here on the West Coast, and so I'm here to help. Uh, I belong to the Rotary Club of Columbus, Georgia. and uh, I'm a program manager by trade, uh, and that's one reason why I'm here, too, is to try to help keep this organized. Got it. Well, excuse us, because we're the ones with the bad accent, so hopefully uh, <laughs> you won't need an interpreter for us. <laughs> Thank you. Um, how did you get involved with uh, Rotary, Danielle? Sure. So I was actually invited uh, oh. to go to a Rotary meeting, and initially when I was invited, I didn't think it was for me. I thought it was an organization of men and uh, that owned businesses, so I actually initially turned the invitation down. And uh, the friend that invited me to go, his daughter got involved and actually joined a club, and she contacted me about two years later and said, you need to come. It's not what you think. And I went to my first meeting, it was a lunch meeting, and I loved it. I loved the people, I loved what they were doing. They were all very connected but willing to give back in their community. And in my, in my job, we give service, but it's part of the job. Whereas these people wanted to just give back because they wanted to give back. Um, so that was my initial entry into oh, Rotary. Okay. And then I, I moved to San Francisco area and uh, I joined a club well, in, in Reno, actually, in Sparks, I joined my first club. When I came to San Francisco, there was not a club that fit my schedule, and so I founded and helped charter a club. Oh, wow, great. So yeah. Charter a club. Yes. So how many members now do you have in that club? So we have almost 50 members. Wow, uh, we chartered great. three years ago, 2013. And the club is primarily made, made up of uh, people in their 20s to 40s, roughly is the demographic. And it's an evening club, more of a cocktail-type club but they are all very interested in giving back. Great, and the name of the club? Uh, San Francisco Evening. San Francisco Evening. Yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you. Yeah. How about you, Ryan? Let's you, see, you I was, I have a, it's a, not a unique story, I don't think. I had no idea what Rotary was, and I had a client that said, you need to join this club. And so <laughs> I uh, listened to what my client told me. Uh, I, I quickly found, after becoming involved in the club, that it was, the best way in my community, as it is in a lot of communities, of getting involved with business leaders and connecting with people, and uh, found that you can do a lot of good through through Rotary. So I've uh, taken off since then, and, and I've enjoyed every minute. Great, and the size of your club? My club has about 315 members. Really? We, uh, wow. We're 100 years old. We just turned 100, <laughs> 100 this year and celebrated our centennial uh, anniversary, and uh, we're still going strong. Wow, uh, that's outstanding. So tell me a little bit about your club. Um, interesting part, being 100 years old, how does the uh, demographics fit in yours? We know Danielle has mostly younger members. Mm -hmm. yep. You have a pretty good cross-section there. Yep, uh, so our cross, uh, we average age is probably about 60. Okay. Uh, but that's, I don't think that is an indica indication of uh, the, the mental age, if you will, of our club. We have uh, a lot of folks that are very involved, very accepting of things in our community. We are bringing in newer members, um, but uh, it's it's a thriving club uh, in, in all sense of the word, and uh, so we're going strong. <laughs> Sounds good. And you guys meet uh, morning? We're a lunch club. A lunch club. We meet win Wednesdays at lunch. Okay. Okay. And the name of the club and the city? Yeah, it's the Rotary Club of Columbus in Columbus, Georgia. Okay. Club Georgia. 200. Club 200. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Well, thank you. Uh, Danielle, back to you. Yeah. What did you, uh, or do you get most out of Rotary? Something like a Rotary moment, something like that? You know, I would have to say that my moment, I actually have, I may have more than one moment. Um, when we chartered our club in 2013 was an amazing moment because the majority of my members that came into our club were new to Rotary. They didn't know anything about Rotary. And there were about five or six of us that had been involved in the organization prior to um, getting more people involved. But so we probably had maybe 80 to 90% of our members that were new. 
And it was exciting to share the experiences with them and to see their energy and to basically show them a world that they didn't know existed. And I had many people say to me that if they had known that this organization had been there, they would have joined a long time ago. Um, so I would say that is by far one of my mo more proud moments that I feel that I could share that with right. them. So what, what would you say would be the highlights, those things that bring that out? Is it events? Is it projects? You know, I think a lot of it's the projects. Um, a lot of our club members really like to do hands-on projects, but it's also the people. You know, most people sure. in the organization are just giving and wonderful people that you can trust and spend a lot of time with. And I, we always try to make sure that when people come to visit our club, we're very welcoming, we invite them to our events, um, our club has become a family. And right. so right. even when we go to district conferences or different events, you know, we'll rent a house together, we <laughs> all stay together. Um, we're kind of that loud Italian, well, I don't want to say loud Italian <laughs> family, but that has lots of brothers and sisters. And that's, that's great. Yeah. That is good. Sounds yeah. like a well-gelled group there. Yes, they're yeah. fun. Brian, how about you? Your rotary moment or experience? Sure. So I have uh, more than one also. Uh, coming in as a young member, I've uh, been in rotary for 11 years, so I was pretty young when I came into my club. Uh, there are a lot of, of uh, prominent community and business leaders in the club, uh, and I didn't expect that they'd want me to step up and do anything in the club, but I was asked by someone that I respect a lot in the community to serve on our board and to get involved in leadership, and I took that uh, as, as a serious challenge, as, as a moment for me to step in and do something with this club that's so involved in our community. So being given the opportunity to lead and be involved in the club and what it does in the community was, was for me a, one of my moments. The second is you can't experience the international part of Rotary until you do something that's outside of your, your local community. And so I went to the uh, convention in Lisbon. Uh, my club sends our president elect every year to the international convention and it really was eye-opening. And it, it, there are people there that their lives have been transformed in a way that we don't understand here in the U.S. And you don't get that unless you go to the convention or do something that's outside of the U.S. So that for me was a significant moment. That, that is impressive and that's great. We don't hear a lot about mentoring uh, as far as members because um, like myself, I, I did like Danielle did and I just joined in, we chartered a club. So tell us a little bit about that. How did that affect you? We don't hear a lot about mentorship specific. I mean, it sounds like you had a senior member. Yeah, sure. So uh, it's interesting that you talk about mentoring because uh, some of the work that Danielle and I have done have, uh, has been with the uh, young professionals uh, movement here in the U.S. And mentoring is something that uh, regularly comes up. And uh, in our club level, uh, we have a pretty strong affiliation between our, our older members and our younger members. Uh, they, they're very accepting, and I think the clubs that can find a way to strike that balance uh, tend to be very successful. Uh, it, gives, it gives the opportunity for the established members to be involved and to share their experience, while the younger members get something out of it, uh, and they get some value out of their membership. So. Sure. Um, is any of that professional, I'd say, professional development also, is that included? Yeah, absolutely. I'd say professional development is, is absolutely key in, in that, and it's a... It's an, an asset that Rotary has, yeah. and uh, that's, a, that's a strong it's asset. It's true, and often overlooked, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. that, that's great. Thanks for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Let's jump into some of the pictures. I, I see you brought some pictures with you. Um, yeah. This is the actual Connecting for Good tour. Now, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about the tour, the sure. idea, where that came about, sure. and the goals. Uh, so the Connecting for Good tour actually came from um, a summit that we had last year at Berkeley. It was the West Coast Young Professional Summit. And a lot of this was all prompted through the Young Professional Campaign, actually, that began years ago, a few years ago. Um, a couple donated a million dollars to Rotary to help with youth. And they created this Young Professional Campaign. And part of the campaign was a Young Professional Summit in Chicago, which occurred in 2014. And actually, that's how I met Ryan. Mm. There were 32 of us that were invited to that um, summit. And from that, it prompted a lot of energy and excitement and engagement in the organization. And so two of us uh, created the West Coast Young Professional Summit. And it was similar. It was kind of a takeoff from the summit in Chicago. But we, we found that we engaged people on our, in our zones. So we engaged people in zones 25 and 26. Why don't you tell us the uh, geographical area of 25 and 26? Sure. So we had people all over from Hawaii up to parts of Canada, all the way down the west coast of the United States, over to Nevada, Arizona, California, um, 
Oregon and Washington. So quite a large area. Um, at the summit, we had about 120 people, and so they were from all over those areas. So the tour actually came from that summit. So at the end of the summit, after we had engaged everybody and everyone was excited, and we were trying to figure out what the best way to continue the engagement, but then to make it more local. We wanted to bring that more into the local community. So what we did is we came up with this idea that was very similar to Rolling with Rotary. I don't know if you had seen that in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to expand on that idea. And so basically, we tasked the people that were at the summit to be leaders in each of the cities. And we decided we were going to have a goodwill tour. And that's basically what it is. It's, it's spreading goodwill all throughout the West Coast. In each of the city stops, they are doing large community service of projects. So they are partnering with organizations in the community to showcase the work that Rotary does. You know, Rotary is one of the world's best kept secret. And uh, I say that because I think we're very good at what we do, but not everybody knows that. And this was a way to showcase the organization again, maybe engage organizations that we haven't partnered with before. Mm -hmm. And so the tour itself, six states, 14 cities. It started in Honolulu, and that was the kickoff, and that's actually what some of the uh, um, the photos are, and it's traveling, and actually today it's in San Diego and LA, but it travels from Honolulu down to Portland, to Eugene, Sacramento, San Francisco, Oakland, Fresno, Bakersfield, Las Vegas, over to Phoenix, <laughs> San Diego, Los Angeles, and the ending will be here in Santa Barbara. Wow. So um, we're talking pretty much road trip here, with mm -hmm. the exception of the first leg from Hawaii yes. to, uh, to mainland. That would be painful to try <laughs> to drive over that. <laughs> that I would don't be know a little tough. <laughs> a little tough. So uh, actually, it is a road trip then. Yes, it's, okay. it's a road trip. There with are five destination people. specific. Yes, and okay. uh, there are five people on the RV. It's an RV. Okay. So we have an RV vehicle and a pace car. So we have a car in front, and they're all decked out in decals that nice. say "Connecting for Good." Okay. And uh, there are three Rotarians on the RV and two Rotaract members um, on the RV. Wow. And they're traveling between each of these cities and they're spreading goodwill. <laughs> that is great. Yeah. Well, let's jump into the pictures. Sure. So the first picture we have uh, looks like your kickoff. That would be the start yes. point? Yes. That is the kickoff in Honolulu. Um, actually, the leads that we had in Honolulu were Lane Pahama and Randy, who are seen here, and that's also with our district governor as well. Mm -hmm. And at the event in Honolulu, it was wonderful. They partnered with the Boys and Girls Club. It was one of the first times they'd partnered with the Boys and Girls Club, mm -hmm. and the Boys and Girls Club really wanted, needed the support, and they're hoping to do something again later, which is part of why this is so exciting. That's what we were hoping for this to do. Understood, that's yes. great. And then the next picture, you have uh, the team right there, I guess, yes. that you're- Yes, they're the two mm -hmm. leads for the actual and, event. Uh, for the event overall? Yes. So they're traveling the so whole they, time. Well, no, no, just for Honolulu. For Honolulu. Yes. Okay, yes. got it. Yes. So they're, they're the local ones there? Yes, they are. That organized yes. that. And that was at the Boys and Girls Club, you said? Yes. Okay. Yep. What, kind of, what kind of work did you do there, or what kind so of events? So they actually had, what they did was a celebration slash uh, booth for the kids. So okay. the celebration had you know bands, and there were dancers. But then at the booths, the Rotary Club, some of the Rotary Clubs, other groups in the um, the community came together and they were offering vision testing, they were offering, they could get fingerprinted, like anything that they needed wow. that, you know, some of the services they wouldn't have provided um, otherwise, they could get at that at that place. Well, that's great, yeah. great, great idea. So the next picture we have, um, looks like you got a stage dance right there. Yes. Definitely has to be Hawaii. Yes, that's Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ryan, did you get to go on this part of it? No, I didn't get invited. <laughs> oh, wow, too bad. <laughs> but Santa Barbara, I got to come Santa, to Santa Barbara's Barbara. Good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so we have the Who the Answers, mm -hmm. and uh, actually, this is uh, looks like a collage picture of a little bit of everything yes, here. Yes, yes. Um, everything from, let's see who we got here. Tell us about the, uh, the table setup that you have in that sure. picture. Sure. Sure, so the Boys and Girls Club, they also, because they were also inviting other community people that weren't already associated with the Boys and Girls Club. So the two leads actually had gone out into the community, knocking on doors, um, putting flyers on doors um, from those places to ask if anybody wants to come to the Boys and Girls Club because they know that there's a big need in that area. So they had their own uh, set up there as well so that there were other kids and other youth that had shown up that they could learn more about the Boys and Girls Club as an after-school program for them. 
Nice. And what would you say the number of participants were in Honolulu? Oh my gosh, uh, there were over a hundred at least. Wow. It was a, it was quite wow. a few people. That is great. Yeah, it was really fantastic. Okay. Uh, next picture we have. Looks like uh, you're on the road trip here, right? <laughs> yes, the group is in Portland. So that okay. is that is from the Portland stop. Uh, and they actually that's a very large group picture, but they worked at the uh, Oregon Food Bank. Okay. Okay. Uh, first stop on the mainland was in Oregon? Seattle. In Seattle? Yes. Okay. Seattle was the first stop. Got it. Now, Ryan, were you part of the organization of this, organizing it, putting it together? Uh, I was generally involved with some of the, the concepts for it, but I, I've really been involved with the Santa Barbara uh, portion of this project. It's the largest single project. It's the finale, and it coincides with uh, a zone institute, which for Rotary is training of some of the upper levels of, of leadership. And so it's mixing uh, local Rotarians with a very large group of Rotary leaders, and we're going to have 500 people working <laughs> at four different sites. That's going to be impressive. <laughs> By the way, we're going to do a show on that one, so we oh, want you back. Good. Okay, we'll right. figure out how to get you back here. <laughs> next picture we have. Um, the next picture is from Portland as well, and it was with the district governor. So in each of the stops, the group on the RV, they are giving away, you know, different trinkets and things to people that are there. They have a big board that you can get your picture with oh, okay. that has everything with Connecting for Good. They're trying to get people to follow the tour, you know, via all of the different social media platforms. So right. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, LinkedIn, all of them. And um, so they're, they're, they're having a good time <laughs> is what they're trying to do. They're good. showing the fun of, of Rotary. That's great. Okay. Yes. And then I see the next one. Uh, you got some work going on in this yes, picture. Yes, yes. So that would be at the food bank. Um, so they are sorting, I think it was onions. It was <laughs> what they were dealing with. I asked them okay. if they, you know, had tears after that. But they uh, they were sorting all of that during, okay. the, during that stop. And then the following um, picture is actually the pace car. Okay. So that's Nicholas Domingo. He is a Rotarian from Twain Heart. Okay. And he is following along with the tour in his car. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so as we move down, um, these are all actually in different, these are similar pictures um, mm -hmm. from Portland as well. And then the final picture at the very bottom is of the RV team okay. and the pace car. So that's the RV team and pace car Got it. Uh, getting a nice big picture. Nice, nice. <laughs> you know where that location was at? Uh, that was actually in Oregon. In that Oregon was before also. they left Oregon. Before yeah. they left. So there's still yeah. a lot of energy there yes that was <laughs> at the beginning of the trip <laughs> now, i think they might have a different yeah, energy actually, now i don't well, know we'll see them in santa barbara <laughs> yeah. poor guys then ryan's gonna put them to work yes. so it's gonna really work yeah. them hard yes <laughs> so the next group is actually from eugene and so katie cord who is the lead for the rv team she's actually from victoria british columbia okay and uh, she was being filmed by the local news crew nice. there in eugene so that was um, where they were and they were um, helping out as well at another Boys and Girls Club and helping that area. So um, I would imagine they started to realize the size and mass of the, uh, yes. of, of the zone, it's yes. quite, quite large. Well, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, every state that they're going into, most of them have not been to a lot of these different areas. Yeah. And so mm -hmm. I think for them, it's been a really great, great trip. <laughs> That's good. Now, by the way, where are they from? Uh, different, the location specific of that sure. team that's traveling. So Katie Cord is from Victoria, um, Canada. Joey um, Basson, or Basin, I say his name wrong every time. I'm sorry, <laughs> Joey. <laughs> He's going to hurt me for that. Um, he's also from Victoria, okay. um, Canada. Um, Wolf Reinhold is a district governor from right. District 5130. So he's outside in California, um, outside of Roanoke Park. Mm -hmm. um, Abby Hawthorne is a Rotaract member from Arizona, so Phoenix, Arizona. And then we have Melissa Cross, who's actually from San Francisco Evening. So she's okay. from my club, actually. Wow. Well, that is a good cross-section there. Yes. And then um, these are, that's Abby that is painting. And then also the Welcome Rotary, that's all from Eugene. So they were um, really giving them a great oh, welcome when, gotcha. they, when they came in. Um, now that setup, is that actually a, a site location, a yes, work location? Yes, that's so that's at the Boys and Girls Club as well. Okay. Okay, yep. got it. Yep. Um, and then as we move through, the next uh, picture is actually of me. Uh, so that would be the San Francisco stop. Mm -hmm. So the San Francisco stop um, was a, we partnered with LinkedIn, another group called Global Shapers, which is a, another young, it's a young 
group actually that does a lot of social initiatives and um, global service similar to Rotary. Um, they're known especially for doing a lot of their work with the World Economic Forum. So they partnered with us in San Francisco and also in other cities as well. Um, the event in San Francisco was a very large event. We had over 200 people. Wow. And we were giving soft skills professional training to underserved youth or and young adults. Nice. So they would come in, learn about organization, resume building, you know, all of how do you interview for a job. Um, so it was really a fantastic event. We also received a proclamation from the mayor of the city nice. and county of San Francisco. Uh, so that was really, really great. That is special. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then as we moved down, we went, there was Sacramento. They mm -hmm. went to the Food Bank and Family Services. Um, Sacramento had a wonderful event for them as well, and they sorted carrots and <laughs> something else. I can't remember, <laughs> but okay. they were pretty busy um, with that, and that was um, the pictures from that. Okay. The bottom picture is the proclamation um, from San Francisco. Nice, nice. So that was the tour uh, actually at the event. Okay, Sacramento. so that, that is the group right there? Yes, okay. that's, the, that's the RV Including team. Wolf there? Yes. Okay. That is the RV team. Very nice, yes. very nice. And then as we moved through, um, they ended up going to um, Las Vegas as well. Um, so that was the top group of pictures is um, at a school in Las Vegas at okay. Hollingsworth um, School. And I guess it actually, they said that all the hallways were painted beautiful colors and different things, so it was wonderful. And then the final picture there is from their, uh, the latest one in Phoenix. So okay. they were helping feed the starving children and had over 100 volunteers that were also helping with that. So tell us how many stops in total you actually went to. 14 stops. 14 stops. And total. how many miles? Have you tracked the miles? So the miles are without Honolulu. <laughs> uh -huh. right. It's about 2,500 miles. 2,500 mm -hmm. miles in 14 days, you said? Uh, it's less than that, actually. They're, they've been on the road. They'll be on the road for about 11 days. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, they're coming to Santa Barbara. Yes. Mm -hmm. Ryan's going to take over from there. So yes. Ryan, tell us about this uh, event. Okay, you sure. <laughs> right. Here. All right. So... On Friday morning, we're going to welcome the RV uh, that will uh, conclude here in Santa Barbara. Uh, we'll have a, a nice uh, welcome ceremony and at the same time get our group of volunteers energized to leave very early in the morning to go to their work sites. And, uh, and so we'll uh, kick the day off and uh, you said you might have a program later. I don't know if you want to describe more. No, let's, let, let's go. We'll okay. give them a preview. Okay. Okay. Be happy to. All right. Yep. Okay. That way we know what has to be done. Sure. <laughs> That's right. We'll see if it gets done. We'll see if we, we say the same thing at the end. <laughs> right. Uh, so after we have our uh, welcome of the RV and uh, congratulations to the team, we will send volunteers uh, to two different sites, and they will go to the Galita Boys and Girls Club, also to the uh, West Side unit, and we'll also keep folks at the Pest Parker Hotel to work on backpack stuffing for local uh, kids in need. And at the same time, at the Carpinteria Boys and Girls right. Club, we have a, a group of local Rotarians that will work there. Everyone will converge then after a morning of work at the West Side Unit, all 500 of us, all being transported back and forth by buses uh, for a luncheon celebration uh, and, a, and a Veterans Day celebration as well uh, to celebrate the good work of the day and also for the tour. So tell me, uh, what kind of uh, job tasks are you looking at right now? Well, uh, I think everybody will be surprised when they get there. Uh, <laughs> there's some people are not sure what they're doing yet, but it's primarily uh, painting, clearing, cleaning. Uh, we're going through books and supplies and helping to organize things that the Boys and Girls Club doesn't normally have the, the resources and the time to do. Uh, we're helping uh, with their vans. We're helping uh, to make those nice and shiny. So we're doing anything they've needed uh, and doing it all that morning. Good. Um, and the focus of why you selected Boys and Girls Clubs? Uh, I think that there's a partnership that Rotary has, uh, there's a theme to this, this tour, uh, and then also uh, children in need is one of the things that, that Rotary focuses on. Mm -hmm. Oh, very good. Now, with 500 volunteers, how are you going to train <laughs> that staff? Do you have any idea how that's going to happen? Yeah, that's, uh, it'll be, it'll be <laughs> we're counting on you, by the way. <laughs> trial by fire. Uh, no, trial we'll, by fire. Uh, we it's will, always good. Yeah, we will have uh, several training sessions, and I'm sure that uh, everybody's paid attention to all the emails I've sent them telling them what they're going to do. Or we could do so the training be right now. <laughs> right, or we could just do the training now. Uh, but we do, we have done our best to try to convey uh, what it is that everybody has to do, because when they show up, they pretty much have to get to work. So we have uh, a team of leaders that will guide us through this and, and uh, 
uh, folks running around with supplies to keep people busy, and uh, so that's our plan. Very that sounds good. So 500 people, um, I'm gonna guess about 150 or 250 maybe or so at one of the units, the mm -hmm. west side. And yeah, so we'll have about 150 at Goleta, another okay. two to 250 at west side. We're gonna bring over the rest of the folks will come from Fess Parker from the backpack project and we'll probably have some local Rotarians also. So I think in this community, in one of the questions you asked earlier about the connection to the Boys and Girls Club, I think there was a very strong connection here. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, so that was the reason for Santa Barbara's involvement. Very true. Um, so, so bringing them all together in one area, how, how hard was the logistics of that part of that? Well, uh, on paper, it's very easy. Uh, so we'll <laughs> that's so what you do good, by the way. I've heard right. that. Right. On paper, You're it's quite very good easy. at it. Uh, well, we'll, uh, we, if we'd done this on Saturday, we might yeah. have seen uh, uh, a little more of some of the complexity. But uh, we think we've got a, a plan in place. Uh, we know we have a plan in place, and we can adapt if we need to for challenges. Now you're a young, young family man, right? So uh, what, what's the family doing? Did you get to bring them out or? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> I would have liked to have brought yeah, them out, yeah. uh, but they know I'm here actually. Uh, they're, I think the kids are proud of me. They left me this morning as I departed at 2 a.m. From, mm -hmm. uh, from the Atlanta, Atlanta airport, uh, a little bag of goodies in my truck. Uh, nice. They snuck in there. So they're, they're proud of watching their dad do this kind of stuff. Well, that's good. And, and seeing him on TV now. That's right, and seeing him <laughs> on TV. Which is good. That is good, well, well very good. Um, I noticed too that we talked about shirts. So how are you gonna identify with uh, all of the groups and make this one massive work group of Rotarians? <laughs> so uh, how hard was it to get the shirts together? Was that <laughs> well, we started, uh, it has been a little challenging. Uh, one, because of the size and, and the quantity of shirts, but uh, le we collected a lot of information uh, at the beginning of the process so that we knew what, kind, what shirts we needed. Uh, we have a little bit of a work breakdown structure where uh, our team leaders have a certain color shirt, and those are the people you go to for questions. Uh, and then we have a general color for the folks that are that are doing the work. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's it's been a little bit of a task, but great. Well, we're looking forward to it. I want to thank both of you for joining us uh, and giving us a little preview of what's going to happen here, and also with the Connecting for Good tour. Outstanding, great job, well organized, great. and uh, we'll be seeing you soon. And with that, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we hope you enjoy this. Keep an eye out because the Boys and Girls Club is going to become bright and shiny, all three of them. With that, we will see you next time.